Hello, everyone. Welcome back to episode 37 of the Talk of Fame podcast. I'm Kylie, and today we have on the lovely actor and activist, Victoria Faith Miller. Thanks so much for coming on, Victoria. I'm so happy to have you on. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be on. Of course, I'm so happy to have you on. So over the last two years, you've kind of been in isolation. So what's something that you did over the last two years that you wouldn't have time to really do before? Yeah, so one thing that I worked on over the whole isolation period was actually kind of similar to what you're doing. Um, I started an Instagram live series for artists where we could basically just connect in our love for the arts when we couldn't really connect in person and and do what we'd normally do uh, before the pandemic. So it's just been a great opportunity for me to make a lot of friends in the industry, uh, learn about other people, be inspired by other people's stories, uh, share in our like wins and, and just small and big victories in our own careers. And it, it's been a great opportunity. Unfortunately, I've had to take a break um, since coming to college, but I'm definitely planning on uh, getting back into it especially probably this summer would be a great time to do it. So yeah, it's called Artists Alive series um, and it's on Instagram if anyone wants to check it out. Well, absolutely. Like what, like, what made you kind of want to start that? Like it wasn't just kind of my to kind of connect with people or is it something that you kind of wanted to do to get connected with you? Yeah, yeah. So it, it was one of those ideas where I actually hadn't really thought of it too much in advance. I kind of recognized that I had a love for for connecting with other artists. And I loved to tune into other people's like live shows where they'd interview people. So I kind of came up with my own version of that. And something that I think is pretty special about Artists Alive is it's not just like I interview someone and then they kind of move on with their life. The platform and the format of how I do it is once uh, I interview a guest, they actually are then supported by my platform. like. It for the future so I will I'll post about like say we booked a, a film I'll post about that and it, it's more like a long-term thing so it's not just like they're a guest and then they move on it's it's very much like building a community of, of people who support each other and continually are there for each other especially in like times like COVID. Yeah I love it that, that's the kind of reason why I wanted to do with this podcast is like I support others like I just kind of always felt like oh People would think like, oh, I'm moving on with my life. I don't really care about the interviews anymore. Like this interview that that they'll come away after a couple minutes. That's something that I never really cared about. I wanted to do is like kind of like we're doing like build a community support and mm -hmm. support to others. But like, do you have anyone that you like have anyone that meant to you as it like interviewing someone? Do you have anyone that meant a lot to you as a kind of interview, or do you have anyone that meant? Yeah, a lot to you yeah. Um, I mean, every guest has been just incredible, but the first one that came to mind was, um, I don't know if you're familiar, but there's an actress named Julia Marley, and she was recently in um, the J-Team, which is the Jojo Siwa uh, movie on Nickelodeon, and she um, has, is a, it's such an amazing inspiration for young actors. She has a YouTube channel and she puts out a lot of great content um, for young actors to learn how to get into the industry, showing a realistic perspective of what it's like to be in the industry. And yeah, and I mean, we're around actually, yeah, yeah, we're around the same age. She's a few years older than me, like one or two years, but I definitely looked up to her and I reached out to her and she came on the show and it was a great opportunity to speak with her because I felt like we were very alike in the same ways, like very motivated, and inspired to just follow um, our dreams and that kind of thing. And I remember we were talking about like, uh, like dream boards and and vision boards, and, and it was just so cool to to find someone else in the industry who is who is motivated like me and really wants to help inspire the next um, generation of young artists. So that that interview in particular meant a lot to me. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if you see me, like, the last, like, one or two years, you would see, like, I have, like, a big wall, like, a little, like, picture of things I want to do this year, what I want to achieve. Like, because I'm always yeah. kind of motivated persons. I want to achieve these goals. I want to do, I to do these things. And so, like, there is, like, before a couple of years ago, I never pitched myself doing, like, a podcast or anything like that. Because I was a very shy kid. I was like, how am I supposed to do a podcast if I'm shy? Like, it's kind of yeah. that's a little impossible for me to do. And yeah, so, like, yeah. I'm very always a motivated person. 
so I'm always like this will be perfect like I love to talk to people and like you know, especially inspire younger generations like you said and because like that's the most important for me to do because like there's a lot of like young boys and girls that don't see themselves on screen and especially on screen and, and luckily yes. enough, but that's really important for them to see yeah yeah for sure actually speaking of that um that just that that idea of um of everyone being able to see someone like them on screen is is super uh something that's super important to me actually my senior year of high school I did a whole um capstone project on um the representation of women in film in leadership positions in front of and behind the camera and how um having women in, in directing roles and in, in screenwriting roles in producing roles as well as having diverse representation of women in on on screen is so so important because it ensures that female stories in particular are being told authentically and from a female perspective rather than the the uh, idea of a female perspective or what uh, maybe a man thinks that would look like. So it's a lot more authentic rather than uh, the stereotypes that are often portrayed in film. Um, so yeah, no, I totally agree with you. That's so, so important. Yeah, absolutely. Like women in like on screen are really important because there's like more men in in roles in women are usually the housewife. Like they only do yep, house yep. or this relationships. And like men are like more and more kind of represented in the media like boys are always all like always seeing themselves like women can't see themselves like in the media there's only well on screens are only two to one men so it's like so there's a lot of roles for men and so like if you um since you're it really into us stuff do you, have you ever heard of uh, gina davis by the way i yes i love gina davis and everything she does um, I've done a lot, of, I used a lot of her studies for my research, and she's, she's incredible. Yeah, she is my biggest inspiration, like, she's the reason why I'm actually doing this, is by younger as a woman, like, I'm seeing her, um, next month to speak in North Carolina, oh, cool. and, and so, like, I literally begged my mom to take me, because, like, she's <laughs> the reason why I'm, I'm here, like, she's the reason why I'm doing this, and, like, I had to battle anxiety and depression my whole life and she got me through all those things and yeah. so like she her research where her institute has like I use her research with my research to try to prove to people that there are women are unrepresented and a couple of days ago uh, their interview this interview came out of her and they oh, like, oh there was a guy that was like 20 years older than her that they what was it that they didn't want her to date him in like a movie or something since like she was too old for the role or too old mm -hmm. and like even though she was 20 years younger than a guy now I was like how is that fair like I was I remember being so mad that I was like I want to know yeah. who this guy is like what the rock what the heck is wrong with this guy like yeah 20 years younger like why do you think she's old yeah no that's crazy I haven't heard of that but yeah wow it was insane, but um, as I mentioned kind of before, you are an actor. What made you kind of want to start doing that? Yeah, so uh, I feel like for my whole life, I've been doing performing in some way. Actually, it started with dance. When I was like four years old, um, my mom put my sister and I in dance, and we did kind of all different styles. We did lyrical, tap, jazz, uh, Irish dance, you name it. Uh, then when I was about um six years old I would say I had my first um like f professional film audition with my siblings and then when I was about eight years old I started doing training for singing so I kind of had a little bit of experience in all the different areas and when then when I was about 10 years old I uh, went to a theater camp for the first time and that was kind of like the first time that I can specifically remember where I like fell in love with it um yeah, and it just kind of, it, it really started from there. I then did a bunch of uh, school and community theater productions. And when I was about 13, I decided I wanted to do film again. P previously, I had done some commercials and, and uh, small things. But when I was about like 13 and at the end of middle school, beginning of high school, I decided I really wanted to make TV and film 
kind of my path where I, where I was headed. Um, I still love to do theater and I still love to sing and dance and do all of those things. But I think where I really see myself going is, is TV and film. Oh, I love that. Like, I was like, for a couple of years of growing up, I always wanted to be an actor, but this is something I never kind of thought I would be, well, I thought like, it might not be a good fit for me, like something I never kind of pictured myself doing. But um, acting is such a big role, like in basically everyone's life, like entertainment. This entertainment is such a big part of everyone's life, especially during COVID, there's a lot of oh, yeah. people watching new things, binge watching, you name it, like there's a lot of things. But the, what was, in your personal opinion, what do you think the industry, like acting industry has changed when COVID hit? Like, what do you think has changed in your opinion? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think COVID has further emphasized the importance of like human connection and like um, that like, oh, my light just fell, that's fine. <laughs> just set it up again. Um, yeah, so I think the, uh, I think COVID and everything has, like I said, emphasized the need for human connection. And I think it's made it even more important for us as actors to find like creative ways to continue to create our art even when we can't physically be in person with each other. I've heard so many stories um, and have had personal experiences um, like with Artists Alive series where artists have just um, kind of had to come to terms with the fact that we might not have as many opportunities to be on set as regularly um, as we would have previously. And we've had to kind of adapt, um, work with friends in small groups to create short films, uh, interview, do interviews and podcasts, um, be like active on social media, create TikToks and, and stuff like that. So I think, yeah, it's just been a great opportunity for us to, um, as creatives, to learn how to be even more creative and, and have to seek those opportunities and create the opportunities for ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Like this, if it wasn't for COVID, I probably wouldn't have done this podcast if it wasn't for COVID. Like, it's like there's like a lot of good things and bad things coming out of COVID. Like, did you start with the Instagram series or whatever during COVID or did you start before COVID? Yeah, I started during COVID. It's kind of like what you said. I don't, I don't know if I would have um, had the time to be able to dedicate to that if it weren't for COVID. So that was kind of like a blessing in disguise for me. For yeah, sure. so, yeah. Like what was like kind of like the biggest part for you? Like what was like when you came up with that idea of starting the series, like what was your kind of like how, what was like the process of like setting Instagram messages or like usually saying the messages out to try to get people on like what was like the biggest like part for you about doing the Instagram series and trying to find people and talk to them like what was the biggest part about doing that yeah yeah so I was I was really lucky that I had already had a pretty big community of, of artists that I had, I had connected with um through my Instagram so I had a lot of people who were supporting me a lot of friends and family who uh, just were ready to support me um in that journey but um I think with a lot of things, the, the hardest part is just getting started and just committing to it. Um, I'm the kind of person where I like to just get something started and then like figure out all the details later, like yeah. because I'm an overthinker. So if mm -hmm. I like wait till I have everything perfectly figured out, it's never going to get done because nothing is ever going to be perfectly laid out or perfectly planned out. So for me, it was just <laughs> it, it started so simply. I came up with the idea and I messaged one of my friends and I was just like, hey, I'm thinking of starting like a, a live show for artists. Would you want to be my first guest tonight? And I was like, yeah, tonight. We're going to do it tonight. And she agreed to it. And we did it that night. And it kind of just like skyrocketed from there. I, I kind of kept a running list of some of the artists who I was interested in um, interviewing. Most of them were already friends um, who I'd made um, through social media. Some were also friends of friends, so I kind of used those those networking uh, skills that I had learned previously to to make to make new connections. But yeah, that's kind of just kind of how it, how it started. I just asked one of my friends if she wanted to do a live video with me, and yeah, started from there. Yeah, I'm the same exact way. Like I just like I was like I, at first I did had like no idea what I was getting myself. I was like, okay, I might, I'll start this, something new, like, why not just try it? Like, I had, 
like when I first came in my first interview, I was like, okay, I'm not prepared. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm, um, I was overthinking because I'm a very bad overthinker. So I'm like, okay, how am I supposed to do this? And like, it was like a very big process for me to do because I was like, mm-hmm. this is like very new. Like I've never done this. Like all I have, like like we were talking before we even started, I, we had I cousins in my family that do interviewing and journalists or whatever. And like all I knew is from watching them do it from on mm-hmm. the news. So I was like, um, this is a kind of a different background, like different thing. So I'm like, how am I supposed to pull what they're doing into this? I'm like, how am I yeah. supposed to do that? And so like, I was like, okay, just try to listen to other podcasts, see what they do and try to bring ideas from their, like their podcast or something and put it into this. And so like, maybe you can bring like my cousin's ideas as a journalist in here too also. Like, you can bring anything. It's your podcast. You can do whatever you want. And so like, I yeah. was like, okay. As time went on, I was like, okay, like I, I'm getting the hang of this. Like I started getting confident. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a person that clicks things very easily. Like I'm like, I don't say things that long. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this is, this, I'm getting the hang of this. This is something I love doing. I can't wait to do it like more. I can really do it. So it's something that I love doing to the point where I just can do it like, all day long. I, won't, I, I just love it that much. It's just something That's I just awesome. love doing. Yeah, that's so awesome. Well, oh, thank you. So is, do you have, you played Nova in the film, The Lost Zombie. What was your experience doing that? Yeah, so that's actually the, the most recent film that I did. Um, we filmed in October of last year, so October 2021. And that was, that was when I had already uh, been at college. So I took a train home. Um, it was actually filming like near where my house is at, in Baltimore. Um, so I took a train home. Uh, went to set. Um, it was it was a really really cool role because it was unlike anything I'd ever done before. Uh, obviously, I was playing a zombie, uh, so it's very out of the box, very open to interpretation. Um, and also, I mean, because my character is a zombie, she had no lines, so I had to. It was definitely a challenge because I had to act without any words. So it was very much based on my facial expressions, my um, how I interacted um, on a on a subtext level with characters, and yeah, it, w- it was really cool to explore. It was almost like, in a way, playing a zombie who is almost devoid of emotion. So it's almost the opposite of what you typically do in acting. So I had to find ways to make the emotions and to let the character come through more subtly. So it was very different than anything I'd experienced before. The special effects makeup was super cool. Um, (laughs) I had to put contacts in for the first time, which was a challenge, but now I know how to do it if I ever have to do it again. Um, And yeah, it was, it was just a great experience. And I, and it's, uh, the film should be coming out um, in spring of this year. So I'm, I'm really excited to see it. Oh, that's awesome. I'm for seeing it. Like, what is, like, how, what was the process of getting, the, like, the makeup stuff on for the, for the zombie? What was that process, like, getting to the makeup? It was on? long. Um, I remember it took, like, about an hour and 30 minutes to two hours to get everything on. Um, we started with, like, a base layer of um, primer, I believe, is what um, the makeup artist started with. You start with primer, and then you start, then you do uh, latex. So, uh, the production and makeup artist, he uh, made, he used latex and created the scars on my face with, actually, uh, I think he used toilet paper. You just use small little bits of, it's really weird, but you use small little bits of toilet paper and you build them up and the way you place them kind of forms the structure of the scar. So it was really cool. Um, so once he did the latex, then he did a, um, a covering with the colored paint. So it, since I'm a zombie, it was like a mix of like green, purple, and kind of like sickly colors. So we do the yellow under my eyes, did some, a little bit of black, um, anything that would make me look like I was dead, basically. Um, so yeah, and then he'd do touch-ups. He did like, drew like veins, um, like outline the actual veins on my face to get the look. Um, 
added a little bit of fake blood, like put it on the scars and stuff. And then I also had a black wig that I had to wear. So, and then of course my costume and yeah. Yeah, that was, was that like a very long process trying to do all of that? Like trying to figure out like, okay, what am I supposed to do with myself right now? How am I supposed to Yeah, do yeah. And we were, we were like, we were what's called like on location. So there wasn't, uh, we were shooting at a house. So it wasn't like I had a lot of, um, a lot of like space to do all of this. So it was like, it was very much like a quick process, but it was a great experience to, to learn how to do that quickly and adapt to that, which was cool. Oh, absolutely. So do you have anyone they look up to in the industry as like an actor or just kind of in general? Yes, for sure. Um, everyone who knows me um, already knows this answer, but I'm going to say it again because it's the answer. But um, I absolutely adore Margot Robbie. Um, she is my favorite actress of all time. I'm just so, so inspired by everything she does um, from just the, the amount of diverse roles that she chooses like you can see her as Tanya Harding you can see her as real people like um Queen Elizabeth um in Mary Queen of Scots she's played she's played like a housewife she's played um Harley Quinn she's played so so many different types of characters and I kind of see that career path and that's definitely something I want for myself I want to be able to play a wide range of characters um and something else that really inspires me about her is she has her own production company and her production company actually champions a lot of female voices. Her and her, one of her partners, producing partners, created a women's writer's room where um, they gave the opportunity for up and coming screenwriters to submit their scripts um, for the chance to be produced by Lucky Trap Entertainment. And as you can imagine, um, Margot Robbie is a huge actress. So her using her platform to help uh, aspiring um, and up and coming screenwriters was just incredible. And um, I always say to myself that if I ever get to that point where I have um, that much influence, I'd love to be able to use it to help people who are in where I, the place that I am in now, um, get to where, you know, I may be one day. So I always, want to try to give back to like artists, um, other artists, no matter what level, because I think it's so important to get as many voices heard as possible. Yeah, 100%. I totally agree with that. As we kind of were talking about before, Gina Davis is like an icon for women. Like she started her own institute back in 2005. Like she's my all time, all time favorite artist. Like well, favorite actor, I would say, favorite actor. <laughs> she's like, out of all the people I like, like she's on top like she is someone that I love and adore the most like she's my biggest inspiration and to be honest with you if I meet her one day I do not know how I'm gonna react like I have these <laughs> I'm always speechless like I don't know how I'm gonna react yeah and so it's like in my Margaret Robbie is someone that like is a all big like a very big artist of kind of our both our generation and like she's it's made such impact through like our generation, like she, like, I love how she's making an impact. Like there's these, like she's trying to help people like us, like around our age group to, to make a big, whoever you're a producer, actor, singer, whatever you be, to help people out, get represented and stuff. And like, when I was a little girl, I never saw myself on screen. I never saw, I never felt really inspired to be something. Cause I always knew I wanted to be in industry, but it's been a little bit, but it wasn't yeah. like, and with Gina Davis's work, she's like one of the biggest like actors back in the 80s, 90s. It's, now she's so kind of big right now. Even like she played roles like Dottie Henson, like their own, Thelma Ruiz, uh, Beetlejuice, like Commander in Chief. There's a lot. Like she played one, yeah. she played some of the biggest like hits in the industry. Like there's so many iconic roles she played in. But like there's not a lot of like women and or and especially men I don't like like there's not a lot of women and men I talk about it representation like whenever they're having problems they don't speak about it they feel scared I feel someone fire them back and like they're scared to yeah. even mention it yeah but now like over the last kind of like five years I'll say people are starting to mention it and trying to change things and I'm just happy they at least people are trying to talk about it because if it were me like 
two years ago, I wouldn't be talking about it. I always keep myself quiet because like, I don't want to be judged mm-hmm. or whatever. And people are hitting on my um, my things that I love, like, that I'm thinking about, like things I want to change. So I always kind of yeah. keep shut. And so I was happy people are starting to talk about it. Because there's not a lot of people that would talk about it like 10 years ago. So at least there's some people talking about making change in it. Yeah, yeah. And I think in order for that change to happen, it has to come from people um, like within the industry because um, like I don't think people realize how powerful the entertainment industry is. Like we have so much influence over um, over people just in general, which, which seems kind of scary, but it's also a, a big opportunity for us to um, take control of the media that we're sharing, especially with young generations. Um, like t- TV and film and theater, it's such a big part of, of, of uh, like everyone's lives, whether they realize it or not. So, so we have a huge responsibility. And I think that we need to re- accept that responsibility rather than keep pushing it away. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. So what is kind of advice for kind of younger generations of, that would like to come in, in, in the industry one day, even though it's kind of like a very hard like industry to be in from like a woman's perspective? Like what is kind of some advice out like from the generations? Yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of touched on this earlier with um, in terms of like actors during COVID and what like the opportunities that's created. But I would tell um, young actors to uh, never wait for opportunities to come to you. Never, never look at the industry and feel like it's it's too overwhelming and too too big and too um, too hard for you to be a part of. Because, and I speak from experience, and I know you said too, like like we've all felt that feeling, and it's okay to feel that feeling. But it's so so important for us to create our own opportunities to uh, get together with friends and create our own short films. So if you're, if you're uh, into podcasting or YouTube, make a YouTube uh, channel, make a podcast, make a, a, an Instagram live series, use the, the resources and the, the opportunities that you have right in front of you to create um, the next step for you. It all begins here. Like there are so many people who have been discovered on TikTok and on Instagram and all that just by doing what they love and sharing it with people. Uh, I feel like there's a huge misconception in the industry that you need an agent, that you need um, you need all these things to be able to be successful, but that's not true. Mm-hmm. Yes, that might come down the line at some point, but it really starts with um, you taking a hold of your own career, being your own boss, and and accepting responsibility for that. And I also think that um, something that a lot of young people should know when getting into the industry is that it's so, so important to always be uh, training and working on your craft. Yes, there have been so many amazing actors that are kind of just naturally talented. Like you think of Leonardo DiCaprio and Dakota Fanning and Natalie Portman and all those actors who started really young and just had that spark, that, that uh, spark of stardom. And they just, they just went from there. But for, that's not really realistic for everyone. And it wasn't the, the case for me. I had to work my butt off to get to where I am today. Um, and I'm still improving and we're, and all artists are constantly improving. So I think it's so important to get into a class and find an acting teacher um, that, uh, that you can work with and, and can help you figure out um, what works for you and how to develop characters and memorize lines and learn how to audition and do all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I think that's so important. And especially nowadays where a lot of things are online, that's another great opportunity for artists to uh, get training. Because I've worked with um, I've worked with coaches in in Los Angeles and New York, and I don't live in Los Angeles or New York. But because of Zoom and because of of stuff moving to online, I've had those opportunities. So it's there. You just have to do a lot of research, work really hard, and if you love it and you know you love it, um, I think that that's that's going to be enough, and that and that sense of purpose is gonna carry you through no matter what yeah 100 percent. like the industry like like things don't happen overnight you might think things happen overnight but it doesn't like do i expect this podcast to be big maybe maybe i don't know if it's gonna be big 
not sure if what we all need to work on you grow i don't care if i do yeah. a thousand episodes and don't go big i really don't care it's all about growing your platform and trying to find guests and it, like the matter is like you are happy that's the most important thing is if, if you love it and you love what you do that's the most important thing and you're happy and like the most yep. like, kind of important things is like basically balance i would say balance your like schooling uh, your work, family, whatever you love to do is the, big, the biggest kind of part. And basically everyone's life is balancing. And so like, no matter what you're doing, you, you always have to make sure you're happy. You, you know, you're spending time for yourself, like in your family, like that's the most important thing. And so like, no matter, like I'm always working hard and do like, yes, I want to be big one day. Of course, everyone wants to be big, no, like no matter, you just have to work hard on matter, uh, no matter what you're doing, you'll be big. If you work mm-hmm. hard and keep trying. And like you have like a, everyone has things coming their way, no matter if it takes like a year, a year, five months, a couple of years to make the project or something you're working on, it's gonna be a success. No matter if you don't get like a lot of readers, no matter what you're watching, it's gonna be a hit in your mind. No matter, you shouldn't really count on the views or the ratings or what people say or the media. It's always about if you are proud of that film, you should be proud of it, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So you played in the re- lead role in theater production of Harry's Potter at Twilight. What was that process like for you to play that? Yeah, so that was um, my junior year of high school, and that was just so much fun. Um, I'm someone who does a lot of, like, really intense dramatic roles, so whenever I get the opportunity to do something that's more fun and comedic, I'm always just so excited. So in that uh, production, I played um, the character who equates to Hermione in in the play. She was called uh, Uptight Know-It-All Girl Wizard, and... (laughs) Um, it was so much fun. I got to do a British accent. I got to work with my sister who played uh, the Harry Potter character. And I got to work with one of my really close friends who played the Ron character. So it was just so much fun because I feel like the Harry Potter series is such a beloved, a beloved thing. And it was a lot of fun to be able to bring those characters um, to light in a different way, in a unique, fun way. And yeah, it was just a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. Like, what was it like for you to kind of work with your sister? Because you said you guys did dance and some filming. What was it like for you to kind of work with your sister? Like, when, as an actor, you don't get to work with your family that much as mm-hmm. being an actor. So what was it like for you to work with your sister? Yeah. So actually, um, when we were little, my whole family was involved. Like, But my first film that I auditioned for was my siblings and I all, all auditioning together. So we were, we um, all love theater and we all love to sing as well. So we're a very, uh, a very musical, a very like theatrical family. We all love to do that. Um, I'm the only one who really has like stuck with it and wants to do it like professionally, but all of my siblings love to do it for fun. So for pretty much my whole life, I've done stuff with them. Um, we used to create our own little short films. We used to uh, arrange harmonies for songs and sing together. And my sister, of course, um, she's my triplet sister. So we're super, super close. And I've done pretty much everything with her for most of my life up until college. So yeah, it, it's always a pleasure to work with her because you kind of have an advantage when you're working with a family member because you already know them in, that, in a deep way. So you don't have to get to the process of getting to know them or, or figuring out more about them because you already know them in such a personal way. So it's always cool to be able to do that kind of stuff with my siblings. Oh, I do love that. Like I, I'm a twin sister, so I basically grew up playing oh, cool. sports. Very like I was always very close to my twin brother, and like we played sports. We we're always like a very close siblings, even though we have two older siblings, and we we're always kind of did everything together growing up. I like, we always hung out with friends together, like the kids in our neighborhood, like. I always went to his practices, games, and yeah. games always. And sometimes I'll get bored and sit there and be like, okay, I want to go home. <laughs> Even though the field, what, like the baseball field for my house is about like, I would say three minutes away, like three minute drive. Yeah. And so like, it's not that far from my house. So it's, it, it can, I can easily just walk there and walk back. 
easily since it's a very kind of close, like a very close to my house. I can easily walk back. And so me and my brother basically did everything together, but we kind of kind of lost kind of that part a little bit since we're older and we had different things that we like to do. We have, we're kind of, we're like completely opposite of yeah people like me and him like I'm into like music like I'm into like the industry and all those things and he's into sports rap like basically all those boy things and so like, me yeah. and him have two different personalities and like when we're fighting often he will always mention that he's one minute older than me and he always <laughs> put that against me and I'm like okay you're one minute older I know but that doesn't change anything that doesn't change anything that you're even older. But it's always yeah. good to have a like, close bond with your siblings, even though mm-hmm. you might maybe grow apart as you get older because of your past and things you love to do. But it's always good to have like um, good connections with your siblings. That's something that I love, having good connections. Yeah, yeah. Because even with the industry, because of how challenging it is, uh, that's actually another thing I would say to young people who are one again in the industry it's so important to find like a support system whether that's like your family by blood or whether that's a chosen family um, of people that you really trust and look up to it's so important to have a support system because sometimes the pressure and the rejection and everything and the self-doubt and everything might feel so overwhelming so you're going to need those people who can keep you grounded in who you are and uh, help help you realize that uh, those things don't define you. So yeah, having people, close people in your corner is so important. Absolutely. I totally agree. So you also played Lily in the film Doray Do Avenue. Was that right? Yeah. What was it like for you with being on set and filming? What was that kind of experience like for you? Yeah, so that was actually my very first film that I was a part of. I was 15 years old. Um, and it was, it was an amazing spirit experience. I got to work with other people who are around my age. So it was really cool to be able to create with other young people. Cause it's, I think that's so, so important. Like we've talked about to get young people involved in, uh, storytelling and yeah, it was an incredible experience. I got to really, really challenge myself because it was a very, uh, it was a role that required a lot of, um, like kind of dark themes, um, like there was a lot of depression and and that kind of thing. So it was it was a it was a very cool experience to have as my first film experience because I kind of had the opportunity to just jump in and not um, have anything to uh, compare it to. So I kind of just jumped in, um, did my job, and yeah. And it, it's it's the I think the the coolest part about that experience is looking at it in retrospect because I can already see how much I've grown since then. Like there, some of the scenes were really challenging for me to do at that time uh, because I hadn't had the experience or just the knowledge to back it up. So I had to kind of do a lot of imaginative work, um, which is obviously super important for actors to do anyway, but it's so cool to just see how I've grown from then and how my experiences since then have, have made me a way more well-rounded and a better actor. So so that's, I think, the coolest part about it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if you've seen me last year, like, in the beginning of last year, I was basically at the worst part of my life. I was battling depression, anxiety. I was at the lowest crying every night. Like, I was at the lowest point in my life last year, in the beginning of the year. And, like, I ended up having my own podcast and basically started that. If you've seen, like, episodes... When I first started, I have been, you know, I'm like, you know, I sometimes I can't even listen to those episodes. Like I actually think I did horrible those first couple of interviews. Like <laughs> I didn't know what exactly what I was getting myself into. But then as like kind of grew on, like, I kind of get got into myself, got like used of doing this through my comments in a little bit. Like it's always good to grow. Like if you look back on what you're doing, you think, oh, okay. I don't want to watch this. I don't like what I did. Yeah, there. yeah. You always think that. Yeah, I think that as well of what I did. And so like, that's like the biggest part is to grow. It takes time to grow. No matter if it takes a couple of days, weeks, months, years, you'll grow. And no matter if it's going to be a success or a big, you always have to care about yourself, the most important thing. Yep. 
And so for the final sure. question for the interview is, if you weren't an actor, what would you be if you weren't an actor? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's a, that's a tough question because honestly, my answer is probably going to be like what I'm going to do anyway, in addition to being an actor. Um, so if I weren't an actor, I would definitely want to do something still in the industry. I'd love to produce and direct one day, maybe even write, um, as well. Cause I just, I just love the industry so much. So even if I were an actor, I'd want to be involved in some way, but also, um, at school, at my college, I'm studying entrepreneurship and innovation. So I would love to create my own, um, whether it be production company or uh, something in social entrepreneurship. Uh, like, I, like we were talking about, I'm also super passionate about like uh, female empowerment and specifically like girls' education in developing countries and giving girls who don't live in the US or even giving uh, underprivileged girls in the US the opportunity to have an equal uh, chance at getting an education, whether that be a primary or college education. So I definitely want to do something in that realm, um, whether it be starting my own company or working within a, um, a like nonprofit or social venture type thing. But yeah, I, I just have so many different ideas for, for what I'd love to do. But um, yeah, I, I'd love to incorporate the entertainment industry in that no matter what, even if I weren't an actor, I still want to be involved. Yeah, same here. If I was in like a journalism industry, I would definitely probably be a writer or something in industry. If I fell in love with the industry. I basically grew up watching things and I always wanted to be in the industry. So I always, I would basically do anything in the industry. Even it's like a writer. Who's yeah. Like anything. I was in love with the industry. Like oh yeah. I love and was very passionate about it. So that was, as long as I can remember, basically but yeah 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 so I just want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast it is so fun to talk with you I had such blast you're amazing keep doing what you're doing and we'll speak soon for sure thank you so much for coming on yes thank you so much this was so much fun yeah thank it was it was such an honor to speak with you thank you of course let's speak soon thank you so much <laughs> thanks bye bye